Well, good morning, family. Welcome to our online worship service. We've had some network issues this weekend, and so we still wanted to provide a worship service for just you, our online congregation. And so welcome to that. I pray that wherever you are, that uh, this service would inspire you, that it would uh, bring you ever, uh, love and peace and joy and everything that uh, you need this morning from the Lord. And so I'm going to pray, and then we're going to start this worship service. God, we so, so thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. Uh, wherever we are, however we came into this worship service this morning, God, we just uh, acknowledge your presence, and we thank you for it. We worship you in spirit and in truth this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a fairly new song. It's called My Testimony. And I, I love this song. When I sing it, I think about uh, the, the story in John 9 uh, when the blind man, when Jesus heals the blind man, and he receives his sight. And the blind man who is now healed is brought to the Pharisees and they're asking him all these questions and they're debating theology. And uh, they're like, Jesus couldn't have healed you. He's a sinner and blah, blah, blah. And they're giving him all these reasons of why what he has experienced is not valid. And in my own words, he just kind of stops them and he says, I don't know about all that, but what I do know is this, I was blind and now I see. And so whatever uh, experiences you've had in the past, whatever you're bringing to the service this morning, uh, know that we all have this testimony. We all have that same story that we were once dead and now we're alive. We were once blind and now we see. And so let's sing this together. Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven My praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. Come together, sons and daughters. God with blood and washed in water. Spirit, Father, Son, our God will finish what He started. Our God will finish what He started. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Yeah. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I 
believe This is my testimony From death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony Oh, I'm alive This is my testimony From death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony Welcome to worship this morning. I'm so glad that you're here. My name's Trey Carey, and I'm the pastor here at Fellowship Church, and I'm, I'm excited that you're with us today. Whether this is your first time or your first time in a long time or you're here all the time, we're so thankful that you've chosen to spend this time with us, and I believe that God has great things in store for us today. I uh, just got a couple of announcements as we continue to worship. Uh, the first thing is I want to let you know that uh, we would love to know that you're here, and, and the way that you can let us know that you're here is by texting the word here uh, to the number 615-455-2332. We also love it when you put comments in the comment section. We love to go and see those conversations going on. And if there's any way to help you connect, uh, we want to do that. So you let us know. Uh, also, if you have any prayer concerns or any needs today that we can be uh, help with, please let us know. You can text the word prayer or the word care to that same number, 615-455-2332. Uh, also this morning, uh, if you want to give, there are lots of opportunities, options and opportunities to do that. You can uh, go to our website, tnfellowship.com, and click online giving in the top right-hand corner. You can text the word offering to a different number, 615 615- 398-4011, or you can just drop a check in the mail. We're so thankful for, for the gifts that, that you give to the church that allows us to continue the mission and ministry of the church. So thank you for giving. Um, one of the things that... Uh, we're, we're continuing to do is, is try to help you stay connected. And so uh, if you need, want to get, uh, get to be a part of a group or get involved in any way, uh, whether it's uh, in a small group or volunteering, please reach out to me or one of our staff. We'd love to help you get connected. Uh, today we're continuing a series that we started a couple of weeks ago called Bedtime Stories. Uh, they're about the parables of Jesus and how they apply to our lives. And so uh, I've really enjoyed that conversation. I hope, hope you're enjoying it. Uh, if you'd like to get the sermon notes uh, from today's sermon or the daily scriptures, which are more of Jesus' parables or uh, song lyrics, uh, announcements, all that information is in our e-bulletin. And the way you can get to our e-bulletin is go to... Uh, Either you can go to the Bible app, the YouVersion app, and go to events and then click on Fellowship Church, or you can go to Bible.com, and uh, I believe the information is right there at the bottom of your screen, a direct link. You can put that in your web browser, and that'll take you to our e-bulletin as well. Um, one of the things that we're doing right now is we're praying for our students and our teachers and our school staff here in Rutherford County and beyond. So um, if, if that's you and you want to uh, be prayed for, will you please email Kathy DePizzo and let her know. And if you would like to be a prayer partner for one of those folks, you can email her and she'll let you know. Um, I believe that's all the announcements I got for us today. I want to pray for us and then, uh, then we'll continue to worship. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you for letting us be together in worship. God, thank you for um, just providing a way for us to, to gather and to connect with you and one another, even though we're physically apart. Lord, we are united in Christ, and we just thank you for your presence, whether it's here or there or anywhere. You're with us, God, and we thank you for that. Uh, God, I just want to pray specifically for, uh, for the people and the situations that are on our hearts and minds this morning. God, we, we thank you that even before we pray them, you, you know who they are, and yet you desire for us to lift those up to you. And, and we know that you're already working in those situations, God. So we just thank you for that, Lord. And we thank you for this time that we can, can lift those joys and concerns up to you. God, I pray specifically right now for those that are sick, those that are hurting, Lord, uh, those that are starting back school and classes, whether they're teachers or students or, or staff, Lord, uh, those, 
all of us, God, that are just wrestling with, with difficult situations and difficult decisions and difficult circumstances. God, I thank you that wherever we are, you meet us right there with your grace. And, and you bring us to new heights and new depths in your love. So, God, we thank you for that. We thank you that you're with us today. And we just pray, I pray that you would open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds and our lives to you today, Lord. That we might receive what it is that you have for us. And that we might respond so that our lives and our relationships might bear fruit for your kingdom. God, we love you and we thank you. We pray all this in the, in the mighty, powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship together. Oh, come behold the works of God, the nations at his feet. He breaks the bow and bends the spear and tells the wars to cease. Oh, mighty one of Israel, be on our side.
Okay, I want to start with a hypothetical situation this morning. Let's say that you're here with us in the building and worship is over and you go get back in your car and you, you drive out the parking lot and you get on New Salem Highway and you're driving down the road and you look over and you see a car broken down on the side of the road and there's a person lying next to it on the ground. Now, you know you should stop and, and, and help them, right? Because you just heard this inspiring sermon about loving God and loving your neighbor. But, but you hesitate because you fill in the blank. What, how would you complete that sentence? What might keep you from, from stopping to help that person in need? Would it be an issue of, of time Maybe, maybe you're on your way to an important appointment like a, a conference call or a call-ahead seating at Camino. Or would it be an issue of trust? Maybe you, you, you look over there and you think, well, maybe that person's not really in need. Maybe they just want something. Or maybe you're worried it's some kind of setup. Or, or maybe it would be an issue of type. Maybe it's the type of car. It's not that it's not nice, or, or maybe it's that nice. Maybe you think, gosh, a person that drives a car like that couldn't, couldn't need my help. Or, or maybe it's the type of person that you see on the side of the road. Maybe, maybe they don't look like you, or, or, or maybe somehow you know they don't think like you. If you're a Republican, maybe it's that Biden for president sticker on the back of their van. If you're a Tennessee fan, maybe it's that customized roll tide on their license plate. Unfortunately, for some in our world, it may be because they're a person of color. Or for others out there, it, it might be that they're a person in uniform. Right now, it might be because they don't have on a mask. Or, or maybe for some, it's because they do have on a mask. Do you see where I'm going with this? Let me ask you this question. Who is the last person you would want to see in need on the side of the road. Think about that for just a minute. I believe that the way we answer that question just might reveal some, some biases in our lives uh, that may create some blind spots in our lives that might even create some barriers in our relationship with God and others. Now, the reason why I'm kind of hitting you hard right out of the gate this morning is, is because I think that's exactly the, the kind of tough topic that Jesus is inviting us to wrestle with and to think about in today's bedtime story. Uh, today's week three of this series we've been doing called Bedtime Stories about the parables of Jesus. And, and we've been looking at some of the stories that Jesus told and the circumstances around those stories. And, and you know, we talked about how sometimes bedtime stories are intended to help folks fall asleep. But, but Jesus' bedtime stories were intended to wake people up. And, and I think this bedtime story you're about to hear was intended to wake us up. Uh, to some of the biases that we all have to, that, that can create blind spots in our lives, that can in turn create barriers to us being who Christ calls us to be. In our scripture lesson today, uh, an expert in the law asks Jesus a question uh, to try and test him, uh, an, a question that the expert in the law thought he already knew the answer to, but but Jesus' response to him gave him a lot more than he bargained for. I want you to listen to this, God's word for us today. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. In my Bible, this is called the parable of the Good Samaritan. Listen to this. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What's written, Jesus replied. How, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes. They beat him 
and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. Now, now I want to stop right there and just point out something. Jesus has just introduced two characters that would have been uh, the likely heroes in a story told by a Jewish rabbi, uh, a priest and a Levite. And yet their response was less than heroic. That's interesting. But, but see, here's where it gets really interesting. One thing you need to know uh, is that there is a group of people that, that the Jewish people in that particular time and place would have looked down on and fundamentally disagreed with more than anyone. If you were to ask them the question, who's the last person you want to see in need on the side of the road, their first response would have likely been, a Samaritan. And so with that in mind, listen to where Jesus' bedtime story goes from here. Jesus continues, But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And when he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you have. Now listen, it would have been hard enough for this expert in the law to hear a story where Jesus told him to help a Samaritan. But it's impossible to exaggerate how difficult it would have been for him to hear a story with the Samaritan as the hero of this story. And I believe Jesus is doing this intentionally. He turns to the expert and says, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. A few things I want to lift up from this story. First of all, I love how Jesus answers the question that, that this expert in the law really needed to have answered. Not necessarily the question that he asked. Did you notice that? Uh, when the expert in the law asked Jesus that question, he says, who is my neighbor? And initially, you think the point of Jesus' story is that the man lying on the side of the road is his neighbor, right? But if so, Jesus would have asked, who is your neighbor in the story? And the expert in the law could have said the guy on the side of the road, and it would have been a nice little lesson about helping those in need. It all would have been tied up in a nice little bow, and Jesus and the expert could have gone their separate ways. But but Jesus' question is more pointed. It points to something much deeper. Jesus says, who was the neighbor to the man who was in need? See, that made things a little more difficult for this expert in the law. Now he had to say something that he really didn't want to say. He had to acknowledge that, that the true example of being a neighbor in the story wasn't the law-abiding Jew, it was the lowly Samaritan. Did you notice that he couldn't even bring himself to say the word Samaritan? Verse 37, the expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. See, I think his response revealed some, some biases in his heart. That it created some blind spots in his life that had in turn created barriers to him loving God and loving others, his neighbor as himself. And, and so after Jesus tells this story about this Samaritan, he has the audacity to say to this expert in the law, go and do likewise. You see, what, what I think Jesus is essentially saying to this man is, this isn't really about your neighbor. This is about you. Do you see the difference? See, Jesus was revealing the biases in this man's heart that it had created blind spots in his life and how those blind spots had created barriers in his ability to love God and to love his neighbor as himself and to see those around him as opportunities to share that love. That's what I think this story is all about. 
A few weeks ago, we talked about the difference between listening and hearing. And, and in this story, I think Jesus is teaching him and us the difference between seeing with our eyes and seeing with our heart. Do you ever make that mistake? I do. Have you ever looked at someone with, without really seeing them? I mean, maybe you were busy doing other things or your mind was somewhere else or you were looking for someone or something else. I, I've done this a thousand times. You know, I'm driving down the road or I'm walking down the sidewalk and, and my mind's on that meeting I'm headed to and I don't see the person who's walking right past me that I know or, or maybe that person on the corner that, that I pretend not to see that I don't know. So many times I, I'm at work at the church and, and someone comes in and, and I'm so focused on writing a sermon on the love of God that I fail to see the person in front of me as an opportunity to share the love of God. Do you ever do that? Do you ever see someone without really seeing them? I'll be honest, sometimes when I'm doing work at home, I, I, I look at my wife and kids, I see them there, but I don't really see them. There's a difference between seeing with your eyes and seeing with your heart. I think that there are people we look at every day, but, but we don't really see. And Jesus' story highlights that for us. In the story Jesus told, there were three people who, who saw the man in the ditch, but only one person really saw him. Do you remember the story? It doesn't say why the first man, the priest, didn't stop. It, it doesn't say why the second man, the Levite, didn't stop. But it does tell us why the third man, the Samaritan, did. And I think this is so important for us today to understand. Listen to what verse 33 says again. It says, But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was, and he saw him and took pity on him. Now, for me, the word pity doesn't really do this passage justice. The Greek word for pity is this word splonknitsamai. <laughs> Don't try to say that three times real fast. Splonknitsamai means to be moved with compassion. When he saw him, he was moved with compassion. This word has more to do with, with not your mind or even your heart, but it's really about right here. It's about feeling it in your guts. Have you ever been so moved by something that you just felt it deep down in your guts? Maybe you, you hear uh, about somebody being treated badly and it, and it feels like you've been punched in the stomach. Or, or you hear about somebody doing something or saying something inspirational and you just feel something rise up from deep down inside of you right at your very core that that's what Jesus is saying in this story the the Samaritan saw this helpless hurting man and he felt compassion from somewhere deep down inside of him he was moved with compassion and so he decided to move into action he put his own plans, his own preferences, his own preconceived notions aside, and he sacrificed something of himself to help someone who couldn't help themselves. And Jesus says, this is the answer to your question. Maybe not the question you asked, but the question you needed answered today. And if you think about it, it actually gives this expert of the law a deeper answer to his original question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. See, see I think Jesus is telling this expert in the law, this isn't an explanation of who your neighbor is. This is a demonstration of what it looks like to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. In fact, this is the kind of love that God has for each and every one of us as demonstrated through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And for those of us with the guts to see, not just with our eyes, but with our hearts, this is our opportunity not just to hear, but to see the good news, the message of the gospel hidden in plain sight right in the middle of Jesus' bedtime story. And listen to this. You know, you know what we haven't talked about yet this morning? The secret to understanding all great stories, including Jesus's. Who's the main character? 
And what's the main character up to? We've been talking for the last few weeks about how uh, the main character in, in most all of Jesus' parables is not us, it's God. And, and when we can find God in the story, then we begin to find our place in the story. So, so I want to leave you with this today. Here's the good news of, of Jesus Christ in this bedtime story. I don't want you to miss it today. See, the message of the gospel is that we are that man lying helpless on the side of the road. Naked, broken, and bleeding. Not half dead, but, but completely dead. Dead in our own sin and selfishness. But here's the good news. See, God saw us. God was moved with compassion. He had compassion for us and he, he moved into action. He moved towards us by sending his one and only son to heal our wounds and to restore our lives, to give us more than we deserve, more than we knew to ask for or could possibly imagine by giving his life so that we might have life. And that very same God in Jesus Christ in this story calls us to go and do likewise. My friend J.D. Walt says there are two parts to the gospel. The first half is believing in Christ. And the second half is becoming like Christ. The first half is, is being loved. And the second half is being love. The first half of the gospel is found in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The second half of the gospel is 1 John 3.16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. In his daily devotional this week, he put it this way. He said, the primary and most compelling way the world can know the love of God is to experience it through those who claim to love him. I think that's what this bedtime story is about. That's the, the message of good news for you and for me and for us today. So how about you? Does this bedtime story answer any of your questions today? Maybe not the ones you wanted answered, but, but maybe the one that you needed answered the most. See, friends, I believe that, that we live in a society where we see each other less and less, even, even before we even knew what social distancing was. In person and online, we see pretty faces and, and petty differences and, and polarizing politics and, and personal preferences long before we see people. We let our differences and disagreements demonize and dehumanize people so much so that we are unable to see them as people. People created in the image of God. People worthy of our love and respect and compassion. If we're honest, our biases have created blind spots that have created barriers to us being who Christ has called us to be as individuals and as the church. So what do we do? Do you remember that little poem about the church that we learned when we were kids? This is the church. This is the steeple. Open it up and what? See all the people. I believe that Jesus is calling us to do that in this story, to see all the people in our lives, in, in our family, in our church, in our community. There are people that are hurting and broken and bleeding on the side of the road of life, and they're desperately hoping that someone will see them and, and show them the grace and mercy and compassion of Christ. And, when, and I believe that when we see them and we are moved to action, not only are we being the church, but we're loving God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and our neighbor as ourselves the way that Christ is calling us to.
in today's bedtime story. So as you leave the service today, I want to ask you to, to consider these questions. They're, they're in your sermon notes under next steps if you want to keep those in front of you this week. What are the biases and blind spots that are creating barriers in my relationship with God and others? Who is God calling me to see with more than just my eyes? And where am I being moved to move in my life of faith? Brothers and sisters in Christ, my prayer for you and me is that that God would help us to truly see all the people around us so that all the people around us might truly see God's love in and through us. Will you pray that with me? Let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for for this day and for this opportunity for us to be together, to gather in your name and to hear your word and to allow it to speak to our hearts and our minds and, and, and the very center of who we are. God, I pray that you would move us with compassion so you might move us into action to do and be who you've called us to be for one another and for our community and for this world that you created and loved. God, help us to see the people around us so that we might share your love and grace and mercy with them, knowing that that you have given us grace and mercy and love through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. said if we would pray and we would see and only lay our lives down at your feet you would bring us to a place where earth and heaven meet for your glory make us holy have come to kneel before your throne with faith and confidence in you alone that you would heal our land and overwhelm us with your hope for your glory make us holy like the sound of roaring thunder cover the earth with signs and wonders bring an awakening bring an awakening come and consume us with your power jesus we need you in this hour bring an awakening bring an awakening we need an awakening of your kingdom has no end so we your church will rise and take a stand miracles and life will flow as we reach out our hands for your glory make us holy come like the sound of roaring thunder Cover the earth with signs and wonders Bring an awakening Bring an awakening Come and consume us with your power Jesus, we need you in this hour Bring an awakening Bring an awakening We call out to the broken We 
scream out to the masses, come away, come away. We call out to the broken, we cry out for the hopeless, commanding those in darkness, come away, come away. We liberate the captives and we activate the passive. We scream out to the masses, come away, come away. And come like the sound of roaring thunder, cover the earth with signs and wonders, bring an awakening, bring an awakening. Come and consume us with your power, Jesus we need. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, it's a joy to always be in worship with you, and we're so thankful that, that you uh, were with us. And so uh, just want to let you know if you've got any questions about uh, what a relationship with Christ looks like or a connection to this church or any church, we'd love to help you in any way that we can. Please let us know. Send me a Facebook message or an email or any of our staff. We're here to help in whatever ways that we can. Uh, as you go from the service today, I want to leave you with this blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you now and always. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. Go in peace. Have a great week. God bless.